For best music coach, my name is Dan, and you are watching a guitar teacher's reaction live and in real time to the Persona 5 soundtrack. This is going to be a three-part reaction. This is part number one. We're reacting to the OG discs as we go. So this will be for disc number one. Please go ahead and click like, subscribe, and hit that little notification bell down there so you know the next time I do one of these awesome, awesome streams or release a video, you can support this channel by becoming a member. Click join. That's down there as well. You can check out our number one best-selling books uh, in the description, as well as 50% off your first music lesson for any instrument, not just guitar. Now, I've never heard this music before. Never, ever, not once, ever, never before in my life, ever. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna listen through and in real time, give you my thoughts, maybe pause a couple times, give you some feedback, and we're gonna have a nice conversation. Hey chat, how's it going chat? Nice to see you chat. Let's get this thing rocking and rolling. Wake up, get up, get out there. Oh! Oh. Oh, groove it.
Okay. So that, first of all, was awesome. Number one, I've never heard a song exactly like that before in my life. I've heard a lot of things close to it that we could take pieces from and put it all together. Thank you, Alessandro. Hey, man, how's it going? Thank you for that super chat. So I think what's really interesting about this soundtrack so far is you have this sort of funk fusion thing going on, including with the vocals, and then bringing in like that chunky, distorted guitar uh, in the in the chorus was super interesting. I'm absolutely loving this. Uh, one note uh, in the chat, everyone was saying, hey guys, um, you know, we think this soundtrack's a little quiet. Can you turn it up? It's actually maxed all the way up. Now, what this could mean, this could mean that the people who mixed and mastered this actually left headroom for there to be loud parts and quiet parts. So we actually hear dynamics and it's not overly compressed. Okay, we'll get this thing rocking and rolling. I'm going to turn my mic back just a little bit, and we're going to get on to the next song, which is called Phantom. in those congas in the right ear. Oh, this is definitely 4-4, four, four, the time signature. But I understand the confusion. So when we listen to this song, the drums were not holding the uh, typical pattern of um, strongest, weak, strong, weakest that we typically find in 4-4. Four, four. The drums were doing this sort of syncopated thing with snare hits in different places, kicks in different places. But if you listen to the bass line, there's clearly four beats, or eight beats as the case may be. In this case, I do believe it is four, four beats per measure you can hear the chords changing every four beats this next one is called escape yes please oh Loved it. This next one is called Life Will Change.
Wow. Okay. A couple of things on this one. Number one, the use of the strings so far in this entire soundtrack is just disco-licious. It is so good to have those like double octave strings playing those fun lines is so fun. Now, at the end there where nothing was playing, man, I would have loved to hear a shredding guitar solo in there, but maybe that's me being a little... uh you know, loving the guitar a little more. But I think right there, that organ could have really let go, let loose right there. Just that, oh, that wanted a little solo right there, in my opinion. Incredible, incredible song. I think it's something else that's really awesome about this soundtrack so far is that a lot of times when vocals are used in video game soundtracks, it can be a little robotic. It can be a little cold, not very warm, not a lot of soul, not a lot of feeling. That is not the case here. The vocals here are just phenomenal. If anyone in chat knows the name of the singer we've heard, um, absolutely incredible. Absolutely, absolutely incredible. We're going to move on to Getaway and Arrest. James Bond. Okay, wild little addition there on the end. Before that, this very sort of James Bond sneaky spy sounding thing. Now, what was really incredible at the beginning was to hear how the percussion was panned from the right side to the left side and the interplay between what you heard on the right ear, in the right ear, and in the left ear. Absolutely incredible to keep the momentum going and keep the feeling going even while separating those instruments out like this. Incredible. This next one is called Interrogation Room. Huh, interesting.
What was really interesting in this piece was to hear the difference in texture from the arco to the pizzicato strings. So pizzicato is when a string player, violin, viola, cello, uh, or bass, uh, will pluck the string as opposed to bowing it. Arco is when you bow like arc, like a bow. This next one is called Recollection and Foreboding. Oh. Huh. Oh. 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 I was hoping for one more young gung gung gung. This next one is called Hymn of the Soul. Uh, sort of like Ave Maria for the first two notes. Three notes. Two notes. Yeah, first three notes. Ave Maria. No auto tune on that singer.
Oh! 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 Ending on a major chord. Whoa! Ho, 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 ho. Very interesting. Okay. A couple things to talk about and to answer a question in the chat. Someone in the chat, do a do asked, how can I tell when vocals have autotune on them or don't? So I'm going to break that answer down into a couple parts. So number one, there's basically two types of autotune we can think of. There's the literal autotune that's made by Antares, and then there's Melodyne made by a company called Celimony. Shout out to Antares and Celimony. Now, they both have very different applications. So Auto-Tune is going to take whatever notes it hears, and it's going to just put them into a scale or snap them essentially to the closest version of what note the software thinks it should be. Whereas Melodyne, you do have a little bit of that, but Melodyne's more, hmm, how would you say, um, uh, not see through, but you can't really hear it all the time. So you could correct a vocal with Melodyne and I might not be able to hear it. What does give auto-tune away is a couple things. Number one, the vocals would be perfectly in tune. Number two, sometimes there are artifacts or little blips or the way that one note transitions to another note is different when you have auto-tune software on it versus not. So that's how I can hear. I could hear that there was no auto-tune on that vocal for two reasons. Number one, the vocal was going in and out of tune. Sometimes it was flat, sometimes it was sharp. And then number two, when you have that kind of vibrato, that level of vibrato where it's ah, uh, where instead of, as opposed to ah, uh, you hear the difference? Here's without vibrato. Ah, uh, sorry, here's that vibrato. Ah, uh, here's with vibrato. Ah, uh. so when you have those little bouncing sounds in the voice, the software doesn't play at all well with those little bouncing sounds. So that was another clue. All right, let's keep this rocking and rolling with Beneath the Mask instrumental version. We need like an Isley Brothers voice over here. Oh. Feel the pullback on those phrases.
Oh yeah, drums. So, folks in the chat were saying, hang on a second, doesn't this song have the lick in it? Now, to understand what the lick is, first let's understand lick. Lick is a little phrase that's played. Now, the lick is... Or... And then variations off that, which comes from bebop. It's jazz language. Now, that lick, that the the lick was not here uh different versions of it i understand what you're saying is it kind of had a one two three type of a thing for it but it wasn't quite the lick and also for clarity i called it the bebop lick in the chat just for specificity and clarity we can call it the jazz lick as it is known both in informal and sometimes formal circles. Let's keep this one going with meeting. Well, that was beautiful. Also, an interesting point I'm finding out from chat that the lick they were talking about was different from the lick that I was talking about. This one's gonna be very interesting. Okay, the one that played was one, two, three, four, five, four, three, okay. The one that was one, two, three, four, two. Now, when you say zero, one, do you mean seven? Because we don't have zero in terms of scale degrees. So we have one, two, three, one, two, three, four, two. Like that? Is that the lick? With a little extra flare on it? Yeah, okay. So we I played it. Right. Oh, a flat seven. Yeah, we knew that. Right there. Okay, interesting. Seems like a variation on the bebop lick. Super cool. Or we could just call it the lick. Fascinating. Okay, the dis this next one is called Into the Metaverse. Oh, love that. Thank you. 
This next one is called Tension. Ah. Uh. Come on now. Feeling sneaky? We're gonna be sneaking. Okay, now the chat was asking, what is that sound in the back? It sounds sort of like, oh, I don't know, cats fighting, or maybe a fox screaming with some distortion, or like car brakes, but a little, little lower than car brakes. What is making that sound, you ask? Okay, well, there's a couple things that might be making that sound. Most likely, it's a plug-in-and-play patch. Uh, VST audio unit, something or other, from a sound manufacturer, because you, ha I have libraries with tons of sounds exactly like that. Uh, the libraries I use are from Native Instruments. Shout out to Native Instruments, man! I'm giving so many plugs today. This is ridiculous. Not getting paid for a single one of them. Loving it. Uh, it's it's uh, good quality stuff. I don't know what to tell you. So yeah, there's different instruments that make these sounds that you can get to get the sort of weird, squeaky, crunchy, TikTok machinery. There's all different audio unit instruments. Theremin? No, I don't think so. Oh, maybe with distortion, I'm not sure. Sponsored, but not actually, yeah, not actually sponsored. That should happen though. I love native instruments. This next one is called Awakening. Do something now. That was a ton of fun, ton, ton, ton. I love the way guitar is used in this soundtrack with both the funk style, bringing in that sort of heavy rock, even metal at times, and a quick shout out to Blue Alpha R3. Thank you so much for your support and your super chat. Let's keep this thing going. 
This is called Willpower. All right. I love it. We call this dollar store Satriani. <laughs> What's really interesting here is that a lot of the vibes and sounds are pretty close to Joe Satriani's album, mm, Strange Beautiful Music is the name of the album. Strange Beautiful Music, Joe Satriani, check it out. And thank you so much to Dale Harden for your super chat. I really, really appreciate the support. Thank you so much. Let's get this thing rocking and rolling with our next one which is called King, Queen, and Slaves, another version. There's another one. Okay. Well, that was fun. This next one is called King, Queen, and Slaves. (laughs) 
This is reggae. Now changing. Still technically reggae, but right here it shifted. We'll talk about that. Okay, so what was interesting here was the switch between this reggae time and this sort of double double time feeling thing. So what's the difference between 4-4 four, four normal and 4-4 four, four reggae is that in reggae, it's not necessarily strongest, weak, strong, weakest. It's more like uh, something's happening here, strong, something's happening here, strong. So instead of the strongest beats being one and three, the stronger beats that are felt are two and four. So what was interesting was to hear that transition from the where you're back to that feeling of strongest, weak, strong, weakest in four four let's keep this thing going with lost surprise
again, incredible vocals from Lynn. Incredible. Bringing this song to life and given, and not that it didn't have soul to begin with, but those vocals are bringing some soul for sure. The next one is called Talk. That was an interesting little uh, appetizer, if you will. Little amuse bouche. Let's keep it going with Triumph. Oh, what song am I thinking of? Oh, what song is this like? You guys know that song? Tequila. Tequila. The song Tequila. That's what that beginning part reminded me of, I think. Let's keep it going with Tokyo Emergency. Oh yeah. We've heard this before. Yeah, piano, come on now.
really, really tasteful song. I think what's interesting is these songs almost keep on breaking into like a funk fusion solo section. And right there, the piano went for it. Uh, but they used this delay and reverb in it to make it not feel like a solo. And what it really reminds me of is like chefs who go to other chefs' restaurants to sit down and eat like the turnips dipped in white chocolate covered with salt that all of us are like, what are you doing? But it's like a really specific thing that's like very minimalist that other chefs appreciate when other chefs do. And it's like... When I hear a piano solo and there's like not a lot on it and it's just really good notes, really good playing, that's what I really appreciate. And that piano had some really good playing in it. Let's keep it going. This next one is called Confession Secret. This next one is called, oh, a piano version of Confession Secret. Oh, love it. That was a beautiful version. It's called Layer Cake.
A lot of disco influences throughout the soundtrack. And just a quick note for all of you who voted no in the I vote in polls option in the chat, you technically voted in a poll. Gotcha! All right, let's keep this thing going. <laughs> the next song, Life Will Change, instrumental version. Follows any time there's just basically track going on. Okay, moving forward, Blood of Villain. Yes, and that bass is grumbling in the back. That's not a growly bass, I don't know what is. Oh, loved that. That was so much fun. This next one is called Blooming Villain. Drop it now, please go. Oh, it's still building, okay. Maybe now. Sounds like orchestra hits in there.
love it. So what's interesting to hear is that some of the guitar parts, even from the funk, are showing up here in very similar patterns, similar styles, and yes, we can argue that these guitar parts are fairly ubiquitous over different genres, styles, and eras. However, it is interesting to hear, I'm assuming this is the same guitar player throughout this entire thing. This is live guitar. This, not all this guitar is... Actually, I could not tell you for sure if there have been any audio units or VSTs on this track so far for the guitar. The guitar so far is all sounded live to my ear. The interesting thing to hear is that there's these similar octave patterns that the guitar is playing, also power chord patterns that the guitar is playing throughout different songs in different genres. Let's keep it going with Regret. Beautiful. That was fun. That was interesting. It wasn't quite grooving as hard as some of the others, but a very interesting piece of music. This one was called Beneath the Mask. Looks like we're going to get to hear from Lynn again.
Oh yeah. Vocal delivery on point, courtesy of Lynn. Incredible. This next one is called Endless Days. So some of these shorter songs, I'm told by chat that these are mini game tracks that play in the game. This next one is called Star Fornius. (laughs) 
<laughs> oh, this does sound like Star Fox. Insane, insane. It sounds like Star Fox off of SNES. A little bit. Punch out. This is one is called Train of Life. I love the way this is mixed. You can really hear the bass very clearly. <laughs> this one is called Power Intuition. Legend of Gambola Gaiman? Go Goemon? German? Goemon. Thank you, chat. Pro golfer Saru Tahiko. Wow, that was a ton of fun. I absolutely loved this part one of the Persona 5 reaction. From me, guitar coach, Dan, for Best Music Coach. You can support this channel. Click like, subscribe, that little notification bell down there. You can also join this channel and become a member. You can check out our number one best-selling books in the description below. And 50% off your first lesson. Doesn't have to be guitar. It could be voice, piano, violin, viola, cello, flute, saxophone, ukulele, music theory, ear training. You name it. You got it. Thank you all so much for watching. Please let me know in the comments 
what you thought about this reaction, what you think about the OST, and what you would like to see next. I'll see you guys next time. Have a fantastic, fantastic rest of your day.